This is the payroll tab for the settings in LMN time. This is where you set up your overtime rules and the default payroll codes, which translate to payroll items if you're gonna sync your time to QuickBooks. So to start, if you pay overtime, this is yes. If you don't pay any overtime, you're gonna set that to no. Are your salary workers paid overtime? If yes, again, you're gonna set that to yes. If not, you'll leave it at no. If you pay overtime after a certain number of hours per day, you're gonna to wanna to set that to yes and then set the hours threshold. So for example, if I have to pay overtime after eight hours a day, I'm gonna want my settings to look like this. If you don't pay overtime on a daily basis, you pay it by the week, then just leave that to no. If you have to pay daily double time, you're gonna set this to yes. You can only set this to yes if your daily overtime is set to yes as well. Most companies are gonna use this one. It's the weekly overtime threshold. If you pay overtime after a certain number of hours per week, you're gonna set this to yes. And over here, you're gonna say after X number of hours per week. So if I have to pay overtime after 40 hours a week, this is how I'll set this up. I pay weekly overtime and it's after 40 hours a week. If you have to pay overtime on seventh day, so after seven consecutive days, you have to pay overtime, then that's gonna be yes. Or if you have to pay double time after seven consecutive days, you can set that accordingly. Down here below, it has your default payroll codes. All these are, are a payroll code that links to your payroll items in QuickBooks to determine what wages to pay your employees by default if you haven't set one specifically for a job or a job type. So for example, I've just created here or linked three simple payroll items, my hourly, my hourly overtime, and my salary. These are the payroll items we're gonna use anytime work is done in element time and exported to QuickBooks. Now you can override these codes with specific codes for job types. So for example, if I pay different rates for snow work, I can go to job types and snow and set up different payroll codes or different payroll items to use when employees are working on jobs that are snow type jobs. You can also override these payroll codes here by going to your jobs, opening a job, going to the payroll tab of the job and setting a specific payroll item system here on a job level. So when it goes to pay an employee, it's first gonna check if the job they were working on had specific payroll codes. And if not, it would look like that and it would just pay the employee their regular wages. If the job doesn't have specific codes, it'll check the job type. So once it knows the job is just set to defaults, what it'll do is go check the job type to see if that job type has any specific codes. If it does, it's gonna use those. If the job type is just set to the default, then what it's gonna do is use the codes you set up here to figure out which payroll items to use when calculating the employee's wages. Basically, these payroll codes simply match to your payroll item list in QuickBooks to make sure we pay the employees the correct wages for the jobs or type of jobs that they're working.